captain of my tourist boat is old enough to remember the Singapore River the way it used to be, a filthy working river. Noxious waste and untreated sewage was discharging directly into the waterway. But the river was transformed in a massive cleanup in the 1970s. And today's modern financial centre has grown rapidly on its banks. A modern city with a population of 4.2 million people, though not naturally blessed with... In slick corporate videos like this one, Singapore development mad Singapore likes to boast about its manipulation of the natural environment. Currently, PUB is building the marina barrage, which will create... The latest grand plan is no different. By the end of this year, Singapore's harbour will be transformed into a giant reservoir for the city's drinking water. More of that later, but first, why is Singapore going to such extraordinary lengths to quench its thirst? We are always on the lookout for, you know, different sources of water, so that we are not just dependent on our traditional sources of water. Mm -hmm. And that's part of Singapore's uh, water management strategy, if you like. Singapore gets its water from four different sources. It calls them the four national taps, and the most important one is about to be turned off. Singapore imports half its water from Malaysia, just across this causeway through these pipes. But in just four years' time, the contract to provide most of this water expires. Hello, good afternoon. This is a very touchy subject in Singapore, where relations with Malaysia are sometimes difficult. Dr. Tommy Ko is Singapore's ambassador at large at the Asia Pacific Water Forum. From a Singaporean perspective, is there you know, some concern about the, the end of the agreement in 2011? I think let's, let's not talk about Singapore-centric issues, because let's talk about the work that... I mean, I, don't, I prefer to talk about the work I'm doing um, for the region in the Asia-Pacific Water Forum, so I prefer not to answer bilateral questions. Like all government officials I met, Dr. Ko refused to discuss the prospect of a looming water shortage. I think the context of our water supply uh, has to be seen in the background of uh, having four different sources of water. In other words, the four national taps. But right. one of them is going to be turned off. Well, we have three others. So I think it's a question of how well you can do a balance here. Tap two is recycled water. Here they use the euphemism new water. These fish are swimming in recycled water outside the New Water Visitor Center and they seem happy enough. They're playing their part in the PR campaign to sell recycled water to the public. The journey to New Water begins now because we are proceeding into the factory itself. So let's find out more. Can you open sesame? Liana is my enthusiastic tour guide. Okay, everybody, welcome to the very own Bado New Water Factory. So as you can see from here, this is where we process and make new water. I notice you don't call it sewage, you call it used water. You don't say recycled water, you say new water. So what, how important is that selling the message? Now what's important here is that we have the technology that can actually treat water to a very high standard, a very high quality. And that's what new water is all about. And again, we are very open about the technology. It's very sophisticated, it's very meticulous in which the treatment process undergoes. Uh, but we try to be as open as we can and try to make technology um, understandable to the layman. So over here, just imagine your water molecules. Let's get ourselves washed. Come this way. Do you join me here? So can you make it? Uh. Ah, if you are not, you must be the larger impurities. <laughs> this, uh, this is like the nerve center of the plant yeah. where we control the whole operation from here. Mm -hmm. Harry Sear is in charge of the technology and the water quality and he chooses his words carefully. What is the raw product? Is it, is it sewage? Yes, the raw product is in a way is, is wastewater. It is uh, what, you, what you call used water. We prefer to call it used water because in but sense it's, it is sewage though, yes? It's, it's, it's sewage, but... You call it wastewater? Uh, used water. Used water, yeah. But, but more important is that 
you will realize that in a sense that this wastewater is actually more than 99.70% water, all right? So you should not be too thing, but in end, if you have a proper treatment and if you have proper uh, operation, you should get very high quality water. Mm -hmm. It's not an issue. Mm -hmm. And we have proven it here. Although a small amount of the recycled water makes its way into the drinking supply, most of it is used for industry. The demand from the non-domestic sector is actually very high and there's really no need for us to actually think about using new water for a time being for domestic uh, purpose. Uh, yes, we do have some part of new water but a very small part that goes into the reservoir. So it's not directly into the drinking water network but into the reservoir. Does it taste the same as other water? Oh, it depends on your own taste, but because I do have different guests uh, giving me different feedback. Some say it tastes just like normal drinking water and some say it tastes like coconut drink. Uh, let me show you. Well, I'll be drinking every day. I'm still alive. Okay, <laughs> have a seat. Singapore's third tap is desalinated water. Just over a year ago, Singapore opened the region's largest desalination plant. I'm not allowed to film inside because the plant is designated as a site of national security. It's Singapore's first public-private venture and produces up to 10% of the country's total water needs. The water comes in here, <laughs> the logs are removed here. The global head of operations for the company which built it explains how it works. First of all, obviously, you need to extract water from the sea. So an ideal location like this one is, is as close to the sea as you can get. For this plant, we, we take the water in, in here and it passes through uh, at the very front end a couple of screens just to remove debris, you know, logs, seaweed, that kind of stuff from the sea. Um, and then it moves into this part here, which is the pretreatment. There's essentially three parts, three important parts to the whole process. One is pretreatment, the other is the reverse osmosis itself, uh, and then finally some chemical treatment to potabilize the water. 40% comes out as, as pure water and 60% is still left as, as a concentrated brine. So it's still watery but much more concentrated. So is there any kind of environmental concern of such a highly salty mixture going out to, to the sea? Um, Fish wouldn't like it, would they? Uh, to be honest, I, uh, uh, probably not in the in the actual vicinity where it is ejected, um, but certainly for this plant, and I'm sure pretty much at all plants like this that are constructed worldwide, um, we obviously have to take account of the environmental impact. One of the criticisms of desalination is that it requires a great deal of energy, a fact that David Hearn concedes. It, it's certain that desalination, both thermal and reverse osmosis, do require a, a relatively large amount of, of um, energy co compared to, say, treating rainwater. The fourth tap, currently a trickle but soon to become a flood, is rainwater feeding into Singapore's catchment. Singapore gets over 250 centimetres of rain per year but it's seasonal. Most falls in the yearly deluge of the monsoon. The streets and gutters fill, empty into the river and flow out to sea, but not for much longer. An audacious project is underway at the mouth of the Singapore River estuary, and it starts with the building of a dam. This is the Marina Barrage, when all the construction is finished in December, this will be an enormous freshwater reservoir, with the catchment area the city itself. It will take two years for rainwater flowing in from the city streets to flush out the seawater. The man in charge of this massive project is keen to quash concern about drinking water from the city's dirty streets. You can still allow the urbanisation to take place, the housing, the office spaces, the commercial, even industries. And yet at the same time, not be too concerned about the quality of the rainwater that falls off this area. Why you can have pollution control measures in place. Water gives life and joy to living. So use water wisely. Keep 
The government is already promoting the benefits of having a drinking water reservoir right in the heart of the city. Each one of us has a part to play to ensure that there is always water for generations to come. But the plan goes even further. The reservoir will be used not only for drinking water, but as a recreational playground. Imagine kayaking along the rivers, you know, just right at your doorstep. Al fresco dining and play area for the kids and so on and so forth. So there are many, many possibilities and we would like to do that so that we can bring people closer to the water. This Singaporean family is already using some recycled water from the new water plant nearby. And eight-year-old Kairul knows exactly what it is. <laughs> you, th you think it's okay to drink that kind of water? I decided to conduct a taste test with Haslina and her children. One cup is filled with tap water, which comes from several different sources. Another is just desalinated, and the last recycled. And the family's verdict? Um, I don't like that one. <laughs> really? Number one and three is the same and number two is different. It tastes bad and it tastes like salt water. <laughs> Despite all Singapore's cutting-edge technology and marketing campaigns, this household knows what it doesn't like. Okay, you try. <laughs> Cup two, containing desalinated water, gets the thumbs down. Yeah. <laughs> David O'Shea filming and reporting. How about the uh, looks and the...